I got a question from a, a YouTube user uh, with the handle of Valiok, who um, <clears throat> asked me whether or not I thought that uh, Dr. Craig's um, had uh, proven that Dr. Ehrman was wrong with regards to whether or not Hume argument against miracles is uh, valid or not. So this is a, uh, a rather mysterious uh, response to, uh, to him. Um, let me say up front that uh, this is really not going to make a lot of sense unless you already know what Bayes' law is. So I put Bayes' law there in, in my first bullet point. Uh, if that doesn't mean anything to you, um, this whole slide of the show is gonna, probably going to be a bit mysterious to you. So uh, go watch a Tron Dreeton series on probability and decision theory, which is highly recommended, by the way, and come back and then, then watch this one. I'll provide a link on the sidebar. Um, for those of you who do know what Bayes' law is, uh, this is kind of an interesting uh, application of Bayes' law to the whole uh, probability of, of miracles and can you prove miracles and did the resurrection happen kind of thing. So hang on and enjoy the ride. Okay, there's a debate that took place between these uh, two scholars, uh, Dr. Ehrman and Dr. Craig. I, I've given their stats here. There's also a transcript of the debate uh, available online. I'll, I'll post a link to that as well. Okay, bottom line. Uh, the, the subject of the debate was really, uh, can history confirm the resurrection? Uh, Bart Ehrman says no. Uh, Dr. Craig says yes. Hume says no. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to come down on the no side as well here. All right. Now, Craig's argument for uh, that history could prove that the resurrection actually happened or that miracles actually happened what, it goes like this. He sets up a probabilistic model of, um, of evangelism, actually. Okay. So let R be the sentence, Jesus Christ rose from the dead, i.e. the resurrection actually happened. All right? Let E be the evidence that we have for the resurrection, such as, you know, my favorite, 1 Corinthians, uh, description of the post-mortem appearance of the apostles. Uh, you can add there the remarkable growth of Christianity, or pretty much anything else you want to include in E, as, as what would count as, as evidence that the resurrection actually happened. Okay? And uh, let B, standing for background knowledge, let B be everything else that you know besides E. Okay, so uh, Craig's math mathematical model of evangelism goes like this. Okay, for somebody who hasn't heard the good news, that probably the Jesus rose from the dead is given by this formula, P R given B, and is hence very low. Uh, the apostles and their heirs go around telling everybody E, which is you know basically the good news, the gospel, right? And so people, being the rational agents that they are will update their beliefs from PR given B to PR given EB. In other words, um, you know, they, they use Bayes' formula to update their beliefs. So the claim is that there is evidence, history can provide some evidence so good that uh, the probability of the res resurrection given this evidence is really high. So this provides us a really nice, crisp mathematical statement of the question, right? The question, can history provide evidence for the resurrection, becomes... Can history provide any E such that probably the resurrection given this E and our background knowledge is greater than the probability that the resurrection did not happen given this E and our background knowledge? Very nice, right? So uh, what's the answer? We have this nice mathematical uh, formulation of it. We should be able to give the answer now. Okay, so is there really any such E that the historian can give us? Well, I mean, it all depends on whose B we're talking about here. Okay, so for the typical infidel, um, R is actually contradictory to B. In other words, people don't come back from the dead is part of your background knowledge, and, and therefore Jesus Christ came back from the dead, R, the resurrection, is actually flatly contradictory to your background knowledge, right? So, using the definition of conditional probability, uh, we can calculate P, R, slash B very easily. It's just the probability of that the resurrection happened and the background knowledge divided by the probability of your background knowledge. Okay, now this is just zero. Uh, the probability of all contradictions have probability of zero, right? So, um, so let's say we're talking about to uh, one of these infidels. Okay, can the can the apostles or can their their heirs today uh, who are still going around doing this can can they actually cough up some evidence e such that probability of R given E and B is high. Okay, now this is a straightforward application of Bayes' law here. Um, as you can see, um, if the probability of the resurrection happened given your background knowledge is zero, it's just going to stay zero, no matter what evidence you get. Uh, this is just a mathematical fact of Bayes' law. 
So, uh, no. There actually is. For someone who absolutely does not believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, in the sense that the probability that they assign to the resurrection, given their background knowledge, is zero, there is absolutely no evidence whatsoever which will change their opinion. Uh, the probability of the resurrection, given E and their background knowledge, remains zero, no matter what E is. Period. Okay? All right, this is just a random slide I put in here. I I'm really tired of my videos coming in rated second in honors to Hot for Words, so I thought if I gave a picture of some prize-winning memory glands, this might, you know, increase my odds at getting higher honors, higher rated than she is uh, this time. Um, yeah, this is a, a prize-winning cow that apparently gives like 10 times the amount of normal milk than a normal cow does, so the, so the townspeople made a statue for it. All right, anyways, back to our topic. Um... Bayes' Law is not a good model of the conversion process, okay? This view of missionaries going out with red-letter Bibles saying, E, E, to everybody, um, then the infidel's probability goes from PR given B to PR given EB. Uh, this is a very bad model of religious conversion. Uh, most infidels that I know of uh, and am personally acquainted with, uh, they're probably the resurrection given background knowledge is zero and will remain zero. Okay, uh, let me offer a, a better model of religious conversion, all right? Uh, I think the, the pre premier example of this is the Apostle Paul, right? He starts out as Saul, and his probability that the res ha resurrection happens is zero. And in fact, it's so zero, he's out killing the original Christians. And then a miracle occurs, and his probability just goes to one, all right? Now, his probability going to one isn't because of any evidence that he received. Um, you know, he could have just dismissed his uh, resurrection appearance as, you know, he had sunstroke or was crazy or had too much wine or something like this. Um, this wasn't evidence that he received. I mean, Bayes' Law gives no way of this probability going from zero to anything besides zero. If your probability gets reset to one like this, I mean, it really is a miracle that happened. All right? A conversion experience does not happen by evidence, right? There was not any E that Saul ran across which changed it. According to Bayes' Law, there's just no E which will do the trick. Uh, the proper term for this change, from probability of R given the background knowledge equals 0 to probability of R given the background knowledge equals 1, is a leap of faith. All right, This is faith, not sight. All right, very important note here. Okay, There are Bayesians out there who would say that this means that religious conversion is an ir irrational process. Okay, I would phrase it differently. I would say that religious conversion is irrational. Irrational is not the same as irrational, right? Now, actually, this is the most frustrating part for me. By insisting that the process of conversion is the process of rational updated belief, uh, religious apologists really miss the biggest advantage of religious conversion, okay? Why is irrational needed? Well, suppose you're wrong, okay? Say there's some practical Q, such that for you the probability of Q is zero. What if you're wrong about Q? Okay, there's no evidence that will convince you otherwise. If you're wrong about the probability of Q being zero, there is no rational process which will unwrong you about this, right? I mean, uh, for example, you know, uh, this is the parable of the rational Nazi. Suppose you're a rational Nazi, and let your Q be, uh, Germans are not superior to the Jews. Okay, so for you, I mean, probability of Q given back knowledge is zero. And being rational, and nobody was more rational than the Nazis, uh, you're always going to use Bayes' Law to update your beliefs. Ergo, nothing will convince you that probability of Q given back knowledge isn't zero, okay? If you're wrong about it, okay, your only hope of not being wrong about it is an irrational change of belief. Uh, the Nazi needs an experience like a religious conversion in order to see the light, okay? Uh, thanks so much.